Hi everybody, Justin Seeley here with a new Photoshop tutorial for you. You know, recently I was browsing stock photography sites and I came across a really cool pixelated background image and I thought that it would make a really awesome tutorial if I could figure out how to recreate it. So I immediately dove in and began to figure out a method for how to create a pixelated background like that inside of Photoshop. The process is actually pretty easy and it can be done with just about any photo to create a different effect each and every time. So let's dive right in and take a look. All you're going to need in order to do this is a colorful image of some sort. I got this one from iStock Photo. And you'll also need a copy of Photoshop. Now I'm using Photoshop CC and the only thing that I'm doing inside of Photoshop CC that you can't do in other versions is I'm using Camera Raw as a filter. Now you could open up your images in Camera Raw first and bring them in as a smart object after the fact. But all in all, everything I'm doing is applicable to older versions of Photoshop as well. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is convert this layer to a smart object. So I'm going to go to the filter menu and choose convert for smart filters. And once I do that, it may come up with this dialog box. Just hit don't show again and hit OK. Now that's going to be a smart object and we're able to apply filters to it non-destructively. So the first thing we're going to do is pixelate the image. And I'm going to do that by going to filter, pixelate, mosaic. And inside of the mosaic dialog box, I use the setting of 80. You can use whatever you want, though. If you try to take this down, you can kind of see the different pixelation levels that you can get for this. And so I actually might back this down to like 60 for this. So I'll just hit OK. And there we go. It gives me a nice pixel-like pattern. And so from there, you'll see that the smart filters just start to stack up. And the best thing about it is I can go in and change those anytime I want. And so once I have that done, I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to the image to give it more of a three-dimensional feel, and I'm going to do this inside of Camera Raw. So I'll go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, and then once Camera Raw launches up, I'm just going to come down here to the bottom and take the clarity slider all the way over to plus 100. See how that just kind of chisels them out a little bit? Hit OK. Now we're going to take this one step further, and we're going to give it even more of a three-dimensional appearance, and we're going to do that by sharpening the image with unsharp mask and this is going to help create more distinct edges in between each tile so we're going to go to the filter menu sharpen unsharp mask and so in here these are settings that you're going to have to play with in order to get the look you're wanting in this case I think an amount of 125 works well for me and anywhere between 5 to 10 pixels for the radius so for this one I think maybe like 7 works well you can even back that down if you don't want it to be that intense and so maybe four works well for this. So we'll go ahead and hit OK. And so once I have that, you kind of see this three-dimensional look is starting to take shape. And so now your image may also look a little washed out. So in order to fix that, what we're going to do is go back into Camera Raw and give it a vibrance adjustment. So we're just going to go to the Camera Raw filter, double-click on the name. It's going to tell me that you know smart filters are stacked. I, I, that's OK. I'll just hit OK. Don't show again. Go in here and just crank the vibrance up to bring back some of those colors. Hit OK. There we go. Looks a lot better now. And so once I do that, all of my smart filters are reapplied. And the final step for this is to go ahead and add a vignette. And so when I go to add a vignette, what I'm going to do is use the filter menu, Lens Correction. Inside of Lens Correction, I'm going to go over to the Custom tab. And I'm going to go down to where it says vignette. I'm just going to take the amount all the way over to negative 100 and hit OK. There we go. See, it kind of darkens out the edges there. Now, you can stop right here. This is actually a really cool looking background as it is. But if you want to do it like I did it on my website, you could actually colorize the image as well. And you can do that with an adjustment layer. And you can see here, everything we've done so far is non-destructive. Anytime I want to get back to that original photo, all I have to do is just turn off. The layer. You can see how far we've come just by doing that quick before and after. Now let's, let's click the adjustment layer icon here and let's go to hue saturation. Inside of the hue and saturation dialog box I'm going to click colorize first. Then I'm going to adjust the hue, make it kind of blue, and we'll bump up the saturation a little bit. And you can dial this in to whatever you want it to be, but in this case I think 198 works good and 52 works well there. And so now if I collapse that panel you can kind of see there's my finished pixelated background image right there. And so as you can see this is relatively simple but it does generate a cool final image. So hopefully this sparks some of your creativity and gets you creating your own pixel backgrounds inside of Photoshop. If you come up with one, be sure to send me the link via Facebook or Twitter, and I'll share it on my community 
of websites and social media profiles. And so that about wraps it up for this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments about how to create a pixelated background in Photoshop or any of my tutorials, please leave me a comment here on YouTube or you can reach me via Facebook at facebook.com slash SeelyFB. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at Justin Seeley. And as always, you can post comments on my blog at Justin Seeley. Dot com. And if you'd like to stay tuned for more free videos, which I'll be releasing on a regular basis, also be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel here at youtube.com slash the Justin Seeley. Thanks everybody for watching. Hope to see you again real soon.